Do you have a new baby coming into your world and you're excited about making some fun baby gifts for? I'm Jan Hal, and in this sewing tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a really easy receiving blanket. They only use a single layer of fabric. They're lightweight, super cozy, and really easy to make. Once you make up one, you'll want to make up a bunch of different colors, and you can never have enough receiving blankets, right? In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to make a miter corner receiving blanket that's two layers, and you'll, might, and you'll want to check that video out too, because those are really fun blankets to make as well. But for this blanket, we're just using a single layer, and I'm going to show you how you can bind them with bias tape. No worries if you've never sewn with bias tape. Make sure you watch the whole video because I'm going to go through and show you some tips for sewing bias tape that maybe you've not seen before. It really is quite easy. I think you'll really enjoy making these. Let's get started. Let's go over the materials and items that you'll need. Of course, you'll, you'll need some fabric. I like making these receiving blankets out of flannel fabric, and you can also make them out of interlock knit fabric like I have with this blanket. Of course, you can make these blankets any size you want, but the standard common size is 40 inches by 40 inches, which this blanket will be. And if you want to make just a little cuddle blanket that the kids like to carry around with them to appointments or out and about, 20 by 20 inches is a good size for that. I find for a, a nice wrappable knit blanket is to cut it 36 by 30 inches. To bind the blanket, I'm using double fold bias tape. I have a tutorial showing you how to make your own bias tape. Now, of course, you can just use the, the colors that come in the fabric store, but you're very limited on colors and it's very rare that you'll see print bias tape in the fabric store. It's a fun project and so I will put the link in the description below. If you're making a 40 by 40 blanket you will need four and a half yards of double fold bias tape. I'm going to make up a few of these blankets to go with this mitered corner blanket and as I said before I have a tutorial showing you how to make these mitered corners but I thought of a fun receiving blanket to go with that would be to edge it with this lime green print bias tape. Won't that be cute? And I have a reversible bib pattern that you might want to check out on my website, youmakeitsimple.com. You will need a pair of fabric scissors. I love using a rotary cutter. That way I can get my edges really square. And on my other sewing tutorials, I'm not going to go over how to get your edges straight and everything on the, in this tutorial, but you can find that in my other tutorials. Fabric clips will come in handy or straight pins. If you're using interlock knit or jersey fabric, you will want to use a jersey or a ballpoint needle in your sewing machine. Otherwise, you might be poking holes in your knit fabric and you don't want that to be happening. Otherwise, if you're using flannel, just use a regular size universal needle. You'll need your sewing machine. Just a basic straight stitch is all you will need. And to mark the rounded edges, you'll need a bowl. I have cut my fabric to 40 by 40 inches square. The next thing that you'll do is mark the rounded corners. I am using a heat disappearing ink pen, but you can just use a pencil if you wanted to. All you do is line up the edges of the bowl and mark that corner. You can use your rotary cutter or your scissors to cut out those corners. See how slick that is? Of course, you want to make sure that your fingers are out of the way. I love this rotary cutter because when you're finished cutting and you release that, the blade is retracted in so that there's no chance of you cutting your fingers. Now I have measured out four and a half yards of my half inch bias tape, double fold. Place your fabric wrong side facing up. Find the end of your bias tape. And you can just eyeball somewhere in the middle of one of the bottom edges. And I'm going to leave a six to 10 inch tail. I'm going to open up the bias tape. As you can see, 
this bias tape has been pressed flat open. Now you're going to find bias tapes that are pressed like this and they'll have a pressed edge. For this method, if you're using bias tape that has been folded again, which is the double fold, but I like using this wide bias tape unpressed. How bias tape works is that you, you'll sew it on one side and it will fold naturally over. See how that's, you have a nice crisp folded edge there and it will fold over the top and will stitch it in place. But if you have a pressed edge and say you're sewing and it, you know, you, it varies just a little bit, which it's going to when you're sewing, you'll be fighting that fold and it'll be kind of twisted and it just doesn't lay as nice as if you were to make your own fold, sew it down and it just wraps around it so much nicer than having that pre-folded edge. Just a little tip that I have found. So there's several ways that you can join bias tape. I'm going to show you a really simple way to do it today and in another tutorial we'll go over all the ways that you can join bias tape when you're putting it around a quilt or something. But for these basic simple receiving blankets we're going to use a very simple technique that will be really easy to do. So we're going to open up our bias tape, line up the edges. I'm leaving that 6 to 10 inch tail and you'll be sewing that pre-pressed crease. It's, it can be kind of hard underneath your machine to see where that fold is. And you wanna make sure that you're stitching on that line. So as you can see, that fold is a half inch from the edge. If your machine has a half inch guideline, then that's great. But I like to, just so it's easier on my eyes, is to take a piece of either masking tape or painter's tape and find that half inch point from the needle and put a piece of masking tape. Then it's really easy for you to just guide the fabric and your needle right into that folded area. Just makes things easier. So I'm going to find that half inch mark. And you can also, if your machine has the ability to move the needle either left or right, you can bring your presser foot along the edge of the fabric and move your needle to the left. That's another option so that you have the edge of the presser foot to go by. So I'm going to find my straight stitch. It's a regular straight stitch, two and a half millimeters in length. So using that tape, for my guide, the needle is going down right in that crease. Perfect. I'm leaving a six to 10 inch tell. Take a few stitches and then back stitch. And I like to hold the bottom fabric with my right hand and the bias tape with my left. Of course, you can pin this in place if you want to all the way around, but I find that you just end up adjusting that anyway. So whatever works best for you, it's probably a good idea just to practice on some, with some bias tape and some scrap fabric. And I'm trying to hold the fabric and the bias tape really loosely so it's not pulling at all. you come up to the corners to take your bias tape it is going to bend and give a little bit as it goes around those corners if the bias tape if the tape wasn't cut if it was cut on the grain it, it would be all bunchy and wavy and stuff so this is why we use bias tape sew a little adjust and then sew a little bit more and there may be times, depending on how sharp your corner is, you can leave the needle down, lift up your presser foot, and shift the fabric. So 
that wasn't so bad, was it? And you'll just keep going until you've sewn all the way around your blanket. I've sewn around the last corner and I'm going to leave a tail on this end as well, 8 to 10 inches. And backstitch so it will look like this. Now let me show you how to join the ends together. Like I said earlier, there are many ways to join bias tape. But we're going for the really simple, and I find this is great for this type of blanket. So you can see how there's overlapping, and we want to sew them together, and then we'll top stitch. So like if we were to sew these together in the middle place here, it'll be about right there. I'm going to just take a straight edge. You can use a piece of cardboard, you can use a ruler, I'm using flat edge of my seam gauge just to mark a straight line on the back. Then I'm going to take the other end and make sure I'm not pulling it, line up the edges, mark where it meets that line. So I'm going to line it up. You can pull it back and you can see is right on top of the other line. Just take your pen and stick it in on that line. And this is where that giving that extra space comes in handy. I'm going to line up, make sure you're not twisting the bias tape. Line up those lines. Where is, there it is. Line up the edges of the fabric and pin it in place. Then you'll take it to the sewing machine and sew down that line. You want to make sure that the bias tape is opened up all the way and flat. Before you cut off that extra bias tape, you want to make sure that it does fit and is not twisted and is the right distance and there's no gapping. So if I were to lay that flat, perfect. All right, now we can go ahead and cut off that seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. I'm going to just finger press that seam open like that. Now you'll take it back to the sewing machine and finish sewing that gap that you left open. Make sure that seam allowance is open to prevent any bulky seams. Go up to where you ended, back stitch. All right, at this point, what I like to do is flip it over to the right side, kind of look around the edges, and we don't want this fabric to be going past that midpoint. So, and especially around the corners, if there's a lot of fabric, I'm going to trim that down just a little bit and make sure that you're not cutting into your bias tape. You don't want to get too close to the seam. Fold the bias tape over, you can clip it in place. And again, on these clips, there's a rounded edge and a flat edge. If you use the rounded edge on the bottom, it scoops underneath a lot easier than if you were trying to stick it underneath. You can, and you obviously want to cover that stitching with your bias tape. Now around the corners, let me show you what that will look like. See how that just curves really nicely. Now the needle placement, there are a lot of options. If I were to bring my needle down, it would be right on the edge of the bias tape and it's not even going to catch the tape. You can just eyeball it or there are little markings on most 
presser feet that have an indicator for like a quarter inch or an eighth inch. Or you can bring the edge of the presser foot to the edge of the bias tape where it should be and adjust your needle position to the left a little bit. So when I bring my needle down and it's on along the edge of the presser foot, in fact, this is the preference that I like at this point for top stitching, is I can use that edge of the presser foot along the edge of the bias tape. I have my needle down just about an eighth of an inch in from this inner edge. Let me see if you can see that better. So my needle is just an eighth of an inch from the edge and my presser foot is against the edge of the presser foot. That's easier on my eye. Or you can just eyeball it and make sure that you're stitching in a ways from that edge of the bias tape there. A tip that I always tell you when you're top stitching is to take the needle thread and the bobbin thread and hold it for the first few stitches. Then you don't have the bunching and the nesting on the underneath side. It just looks so much better. So I'll take those first few stitches while I'm holding my thread. Then I can release that and you're good to go. Presser foot is along the edge of the bias tape. I'm making sure I'm covering the stitching. Now as you come around the corners, just let the bias tape ease around. It will just naturally curve. Make sure you're covering your stitching. If you need to lift up the presser foot with the needle down to adjust the bias tape, you can do that. So I'm flattening it out with my fingers. Sometimes when you put the presser foot down, it kind of shifts the bias tape a little bit. So just hold it with your fingers. Go up to where you first started, back stitch. Oh my goodness, didn't that turn out so cute? I love the contrast of the pink and the lime green, and I love the homemade print bias tape. Make sure you clip all your threads, pull all the extra threads off. Look how cute it will look with this other blanket and bibs. Can't wait to make more. I, as you can see, I have some other fabrics, knit and flannel pieces that I'm going to make some other receiving blankets with. If you like that tutorial and found those tips helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other patterns and projects on my YouTube channel and in my website, youmakeitsimple.com where you can find simple practical patterns and tutorials. And always if you have a question or concern leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have a question about items or products that I use I will put links in the description below for those. I hope you found that sewing on bias tape isn't really that challenging and it's a lot of fun. Get out your sewing machine, grab some fabric, and have fun making receiving blankets. We'll see you in the next video.